Let's take an in-depth look at an exploit targeting Microtech routers. So Stan, there's some developments with the Microtech router vulnerability, right? You looked into that? Yes. Uh, somebody pointed me at a really great article at the Hacker News and uh, it's really interesting. So Tenable Research, uh, they discovered a set of vulnerabilities impacting Microtech devices, specifically Microtech routers, and um, they found a combination of flaws that allows them to basically run any command on these Microtech devices. And I, I don't know why, I'm always interested by these kinds of exploits, and I love digging deeper into them. There's so many clever people out there and I just always enjoy looking at the work uh, that they produce and understanding how these exploits work at, at the lowest levels. The proof of concept code is really uh, easy to execute. Uh, the one thing that's a little bit weird and I'm not sure what that has to do with, apparently to trigger it, the first thing you have to do is attempt to tell that into the device, but it's, you know you just bounce out. And once you do that, then you can trigger the exploit by running this uh, by the way exploit. And so once you do this, it's, you, you could see how easy it is. You just kind of execute the command and then you try to tell that into the device. This time you already kind of know the password. It actually brute forces the password. Uh, and then that's it, you can execute any kind of command. You basically have backdoor access into the router. Right. And so here's how it works. I don't know if you could see this weird path name. You know, we're all used to paths not having quite so many dots. Right. Some kind of a, a directory traversal attack. Uh, this thing actually uses a specific type of binary protocol. If you read the code and you're interested in this type of stuff, you, you're going to enjoy this a lot. But then the passwords are not actually stored hashed. Like we're used to hearing that passwords, you know, there's hashes, you got to have salted hashes. That's not the way the passwords are stored in this file. They're actually stored uh, with a kind of like a key, but the key depends on the username and a static value. So those two items combined allow you to basically decrypt the passwords that are in this file. Hmm. So that's what this code does. It's so beautiful in its simplicity. It was interesting that the Microtik router vulnerability had been known. It was sort of out there, but you know, the more the, the researchers looked at the repercussions of what could be done, the, the more critical it, it became. So the vulnerability that was not critical was the directory traversal vulnerability. Okay. You know, it was probably listed as medium, I believe. Yeah. And so they were able to use this directory to say, well, hold on, you can get some pretty sensitive files. Now that you can get some pretty sensitive files, what can you do with those? Right. So most of the time, you know, you got to go like crack the hash and things like that. But here, they, I guess they had access to the firmware, which is not that hard to accomplish. You know, you buy the router, you have access to the firmware. And they probably reverse engineered it, I'm guessing. They figured out this encryption algorithm. It's pretty simple. And all you have to do now is replicate it. And unfortunately, um, uh, for the way the passwords are stored, it allows you to then uh, basically get them. It's almost as if they're not encrypted. Right. Uh, you know, the, the, the ability to go out and grab the password file, you know, I think that's one of the most sensitive uh, files you can, you can you know, pull back and exfiltrate. So that's one of the more you know, dangerous aspects of this vulnerability. One other thing I found in the article interesting is after they had found this vulnerability, they also listed like a handful of other ones that they had disclosed. So you know, as devices or class of devices uh, get compromised, they get a lot more eyes on them. They tend to find a lot more of these vulnerabilities that can be exploited. Uh, yes. Yeah. So that's actually, yeah, I have it up on the screen here. They got like four additional vulnerabilities that are a little bit lower compared to this. So I actually went ahead and I was like, hey, what's going on on the port that's associated with this vulnerability? So the default port is like 8291 TCP. And I went back, uh, I think a year, to see what kind of activity do we have, uh, scanning activity. And you can actually see uh, in the chart here, there's a, quite a bit of scanning activity, but most of it happened way earlier this year uh, in, uh, I guess is that March, uh, the end of March. Um, 
So I went and I said, well, was that like one IP address or a bunch of IP addresses? Were there multiple sources? And you could see back in March, there was uh, something like, was that 130, up to 130,000 devices, probably more like 100,000 devices possibly impacted. But you could see that scanning traffic did go down uh, and it's remained low. Uh, so I went ahead and I said, well, what do we have for the last 30 days? So when you zoom in on the last 30 days, things aren't as exciting. I was, you know, it's not something dramatic like a big spike. Uh, but you'll see here on an average day, there's not a lot of scanning, but there are some spikes. So now that this vulnerability has been kind of released again, you know, maybe it's not a default password situation, but you got these encrypted passwords that are really easy to right. brute force. So I think uh, we'll probably see an increase in scanning activity against this port. Um, I also went ahead and I geographically mapped this, and you could see the devices are kind of all over the place. Yeah. Uh, this is just a sample of some of the devices uh, that are scanning on this port right now, and these are probably all, you know, microtech routers or or things like that that are scanning the internet. Yeah, looking no for all real focus area because that I think that distribution sort of reflects the network, right? Yeah, I, th I think this means that it's kind of all over the place. Yeah. You know, these kinds of devices are everywhere or in most places. You could see there's like a little hotspot there in South America um, and maybe in, in Europe there a little bit. But yeah. most of the devices, I mean, there's not that many IP addresses in this list, maybe 500 or so devices. Okay. Most of them are, you know, they're kind of all over the place. There's not one real hotspot. You know, there's some no, some documented CVEs associated with the MicroTik router. Uh, so really what you want to do is go get all the documentation for those CVEs. Make sure, you know, when and if, if the patches aren't out, when they come out, that you're patching all your, uh, your routers and, and, you know, keeping up with the latest code that, you know, address these specific CVEs.